We finally transferred and started our junior year at Ole Miss. The transition individually has been pretty smooth besides a few mishaps, but our team's success has been terrible as our record is currently 2-4, and four, and now the goal is to finish the season strong and some way somehow try to make top 25 and reach a bowl game. We're currently 2-4, and four, and the first game we're playing is against number 17 ranked LSU. We might be screwed. And as you can see at the standings, we're currently dead last in the SEC West and dead last in the SEC as a whole, man. Worse than Vanderbilt is crazy, but as you see, we're playing the Tigers here at our home stadium, so we gotta kick up and get this dub. As Daniel throws a head-scratching pass right there with many defenders, including your boy, and then on the next play, your Heisman winner throws an interception to our team right there, and he gets it and starts running back for a few yards before being stopped short. And after a couple back-and-forth possessions, we're now up on the LSU Tigers, 14 to zero. I'm already loving this newfound energy this team is bringing and you should too. And I also hope you subscribe to your channel. You feel me? Your boy is trying to get as many subs as he can for a new college football game drops. So just support a brother and please like the video while you at it. As the LSU Tigers are starting to drive down on us and they end up getting this field goal right here, bringing the score to a lead of 11 points. And now we're back on defense here. First and 10. I feel like Daniels was going to try to scramble out or throw it to the pass on me, but we had that locked down as we get a sack on him and then he throws a deep one getting a really easy touchdown on that cover two zone coverage and the game tried to say it was my fault when i had to i was covering the flats like the game broken bro but regardless though we're back on defense here and i feel the momentum pulling away from us so we gotta do something as i come up here and get this tackle on logan Diggs. and then on the next play second and six d line makes a play forcing a negative yardage and then on third and eight here we need a stop can we get it and they almost get a touchdown right there, bringing them to the red zone where they get an easy walking TD, bro. Now they're up 17-14. We're down three. What is going on here as we're getting deep into the end of the third quarter here? Logan Diggs is running all up over us and making our run defense look extinct. And then Jaden Daniels hits the middle right here, connecting with Brian Thomas Jr. for a 17-yard reception. And on first and goal, he connects again with Brian Thomas Jr. easily in the left corner for the touchdown. Now we're down four points, beginning the fourth quarter here. Back on defense, I see him scrambling, and I pull him by the neck. That should have been a horse collar, but I'm glad they didn't call it because I'm trying to stand on business and get my team back in this game, bring some life to our and energy back to the defense here as we're now down four points deep in the fourth quarter. I know I'm saying it again, but I just need my, to get through my teammates' heads as Connor McDuffie is pissed off and he needs something to happen as Dan Dernos throws another scary ball that could have easily been picked off. And then he finds Brian Thomas Jr. for a nice 24-yard gain. Now we're basically back in the red zone here, and then he connects with another touchdown to mid-league neighbors, bro. These LSU wide receivers, man, bro, I don't even know if they're able to guard one because you could just lock one down one play with me on that side and the other side have Brian Thomas Jr. go crazy, man. Insane. But we got a sack right there. Less than two minutes remaining. This game is actually closer than I thought as I get a beautiful hit stick right there on Chris Hilton Jr. ensuring he ain't get any more yards than them three. Now, third and 13 here. We have to get a stop here, and it's very crucial as we do end up forcing a negative yardage play. And now, Conor McDuffie with a chance to do something special, and we end up getting a four yard return. Regardless, though, we're on offense, basically less than 30 seconds left to create something special, make something special happen. Jackson Dart and you, we trust as he throws a dot to Trey Harris, and he gets free. Let's go. Take it to the crib. Let's go. Let's Oh, this nigga got a 51 yard reception. No, how do that bitch? Run to the line. Run to the line of scrimmage. Let's go. We got the playoff. It's less than 15 seconds. He threw an incomplete pass. Regardless, though, next play, third and goal. Hand it off to the ring back, and we get that touchdown that we need, and we're now in the lead. We're out by one point. We ain't get that two point conversion, but it's good, though, as I see him trying to scramble, and I'm gonna get the tackle on Jaden Daniels, and then with lessons 0 0 on the clock, triple zero, he throws a ball. And my teammate gets the interception. Let's go! In a game that we shouldn't have won, we win against number 17 ranked LSU, man. I am so hyped as we finish the game with six solo tackles. Man. And now we're top five in the country in tackles as our next game is against the Appalachian State Mountaineers. And we're playing them back at the Val Hemingway Stadium down in good old Mississippi as we start off here on defense. As I peep this option toss and get on it to get that tackle for loss here, Connor McDuffie already starting to make an impact in this game and it just started. And now on third and 14, we have a chance to end this drive off and we do as they pass underneath and our teammate. But now nearing the end of the third quarter, we're back here out on defense as our 
offense couldn't capitalize off of that beautiful field position they got. And I'm starting to worry as they're about to head into the second quarter with zero points on the scoreboard. And I don't want the Mountaineers to score for us. So my defense and I are going to do our best to prevent anything from happening. But now on first and 10 here, we're running man coverage. And I'm peeping that slants play as I end up in a perfect position to make that tackle. And then on second and two, he hands off to the running back. And they end up picking up the first down. But hold up. Did Cuz just teleport? No way, I know y'all see this. My teammate brought him down to the ground and Cuz just smooth criminal his way a few more yards. Man, I just wish I had that ability. There's gotta be something we don't know about, EA. What y'all not telling us? Regardless, my biggest fear for this game came true as the Mountaineers ended up scoring first. Now we're down to score. And nearing the end of the first half here, the Mountaineers have another chance to score as they knock down the front door to the end zone. But me and my dogs are gonna do everything in our power to try to stop that from happening. As on second goal here, I take that block so my teammate can come up and get that tackle. And then on third and goal, I'm playing my man perfectly, but he somehow throws a dot to the middle of the field. Damn. Now we're down two scores to a bum-ass team, and I, I, I'm worried. Not gonna lie, I'm worried. This might be another one of those games where we lose to a subpar team, bro. And then on second and seven, I just missed this tackle, whiff it up, messed it up completely, and he just runs to the end zone. That was my fault. They had me on the island, one-on-one. -on -one. I folded. But now, nearing the end of the third quarter here, I'm a little confused as to why our offense still has zero points on the scoreboard. What is going on? Why are these niggas not offensing? Yes, I made up that word. But regardless though, we have a high-powered offense. Jackson Dart, Quinton Junction, Trey Harris, Lane Kiffin, I head coach, what's going on here? And then we end the game off with us 21-0 skunk. Literally. Connor McDuffie finished with six tackles and one for loss. And now I'm just looking at the offensive stat because what went wrong as Jackson Dart threw 10 interceptions, Quinshawn Jackson basically run for zero yards with 14 rushes. And our offensive line played perfect. They gave up zero sacks, but we still getting, still can score on offense. What's going on, man? But hopefully we could turn it around against this good Arkansas team as they're eight and one, ranked 13 in the nation. And if we get a win here, that's definitely gonna help in our rankings as we end up making that tackle right there. And then on second and nine, he hits the middle, clearly getting them that first down. And then on first and 10 here, the D-line doesn't allow KJ Jefferson to scramble as they get him down. And then on third and eight, the D-lineman read that screenplay and got the pick. I can't believe his big ass did that. That's tough, man. And now we're up 21 to seven on a ranked opponent here. And I'm feeling really good as we're nearing the end of the first half here. And then what the hell just happened as they pick up that 31 yard reception. And on third and two, KJ checks it to the check down, picking up that first and getting them close to their preferred destination. And on second and six, hands it off to the running back again as he ends up getting that 12 yard reception. And then with less than 10 seconds remaining to have, second and goal here, the D-line picks up a crucial sack, forcing him to kick for three. And now we're in the second half here, up 21 and 10. I'm feeling real confident as we get another stop there. And then on third and 10, nothing to do. He throws a deep one. Cuz caught that? Oh my gosh, over two DBs. Double coverage. Who he feeling like? Give him that Madden double me ability. Jesus. Even after that miraculous play to further their drive, they still only ended up getting three points from that. And that is a W in my books as we're now back in defense here, nearing the end of the third quarter. KJ throws another great pass. Nah, I might have to look at this nigga's stats, bro. This nigga might be nice. There's something you don't know about him. They're definitely 8 and 1 for a reason, and it's gotta be because of him as I miss out on this tackle, bro. I need to get my strength up, bro. Connor McDuffie, just a little ass white boy. We gotta get in the weight room this summer for show. Sure. But on 4th and 6 here, they end up trying to go for a field goal, but one of their players false started, bringing them back 5 yards, and them boys had to punt. But we still didn't add any more points on offense, so we're back on defense here as I technically force this fumble on KJ Jefferson. And then now in this next play here, I come up and make the tackle, bring them down. Cuz almost ran me over. I know some of y'all peeped that. Chill. As KJ just bulldozed through one of my players there. This nigga, yo, he's nice, bro. He's he's nice for sure. But the Razorbacks couldn't do anything on that drive. And fast forward to this next possession. We're up 28 to 13. He throws a ball into the stands right there. And this game is pretty much over, man. I'm not going to lie. It was a good game. KJ Jefferson, I give all props to you, buddy. You're nice. It's just your teammates' ass. As, look, as, look at my defense, bro. What is this, bro? Thankfully, there was a flag there on the holding, and they brought that shit back. But yeah, that's how the game pretty much ended. Your boy had two tackles, but it was one of those games where my impact was more than the stat sheet. Before our 10th game of the season here, we're facing against the Troy Trojans. 
This is a low-level team, so it should be easy as we start off with a tackle for loss here, preventing Videl from getting past the line of scrimmage. Like I said when I first introduced him, I have a good feeling about this game. As at the start of the second quarter here, we're already up 14 zip, and our teammates force another tackle for loss on Videl right there. And then on third and 12, he hits the check down. Me and my teammate are there, and I force them right into my teammates' hands. And now we're back returning this kickoff right here. As I cut to the left, and I'm starting to get upfield, breaking tackles, weaving tackles, but I get taken down. Getting the 17 yard return right there. And then on first and 10 back on defense here, he hands it off to Vidal. And he's starting to get, oh my gosh, he just knocked my teammate over like that. And I had to come all the way from the other side of the field to take him down as he picked up 26. And then I play underneath on this route to get our first interception of our old Miss Rebel career, man. Oh man, Connor McDuffie. Oh, he's in his Duffy as he goes underneath to pick off that interception right there, getting that ball, picking it off. What I tell you about this kid, man, this white boy is special. As we're back on defense here, currently up 21 zip, and I come down here to help my teammate make sure that we bring him down, and then on third and five, I'm covering my zone, he hits the other side of the field, and my teammates help bring him down, and I'm returning this kickoff again, as I cut to the left again, and I'm weaving tackles, getting past people, but there's a flag on the play, as I just got brought down, just right outside the 30 yard line, and now we're back on defense here, we're still up crazy big as we're currently up 28 to 7. The boys finally put some points up on the scoreboard. And now look on the screen pass, 30 and 12. That ah, shit's not working, buddy. As I come and make sure that he stays down. And on the last play of the third quarter here, I'm covering my man close tight and many man coverage. And their QB hits the other side of the field. And oh my gosh, Cuz just bulldozed his way through like four people. And then on the next play, oh my gosh, my teammate just smacked the shit out of him. That's the type of hit stick animations I'd be expecting to get with Connor McDuffie. As they pick up the first on that play, and then on first and 10, I see QB running a fake option there, and I'm there to make the tackle as he almost just ran me over right there. But then on third and nine, he hits the right side. I'm there as I go from the side to the back and yank him down. And then on fourth and three, they need this to make some shake. And their receiver drops the ball, literally. As we get this easy dub right here, Bringing our record to, to five and five. One more win, and we're in the bowl games, baby. As your boy went crazy, a tackle for loss, interception, five tackles in total. And now we're facing a tough SEC opponent in the Missouri Tigers. And let's just say this game did not go well. I only finished with a tackle for this game. I'm going to just save all the boring watch and just let you know we got our ass kicked. But now for the last game of the day and last game of the season, if we don't win this game, we're facing against the Mississippi State Bulldogs, our rivals for the Egg Bowl game. RP Mike Leach, and let's get straight into it as we're already down 0 7. As did I just miss that tackle? Fuck. Damn. But I still come back to make the tackle and finish the job there, ensuring that he didn't score for that. And then on first and 10, I laid a fucking hammer on him. Look at, look up. You remember those hissing animations I was talking about earlier? Yeah. That boy just did one of those. As I come down here to make the tackle, ensuring that boy didn't get in the end zone. And then on first and goal, Connor plays great coverage to ensure that there wasn't a score there. And then on third and goal here, the check down cheese finally worked. But we just got to brush it off as a team and make sure it doesn't happen again. As we're back on defense here, first and 10, their QB throws up a bomb and he's wide open. Catches it and that's an easy touchdown for him as our DBs just got burnt on a 71 yard touchdown. Yeah, we might be cooked. As I give up this 25-yard pass here, yeah, we're definitely cooked. We're definitely cooked, Monica. The only positive things Connor can tell the team now is we're only down by 14, and we have a lot of time left as it's not even the end of the first half yet. But our main focus and priority right now is to make sure the Bulldogs don't score again before the half ends as I come down here to make this tackle, but he still ends up picking the first down. And then on second 10 here, we're nearing 20 seconds left in the first half. I come down and get another and crucial tackle for loss there. And then on third and 12, with less than 10 seconds remaining in the half, he hits the underneath route, forcing him to kick a field goal. And down 10 points of the half, can't really be mad at that as in the second half here that boy is scary he heard my footsteps and dropped that ball and then on second and 13 i'm playing tight on my man as the d-line finally got a sack right there and then on third and 15 he has nowhere to pass to as we get a crucial stop right there forcing the game and bringing it down to three points here as on first and 10 i contain the outside and force qb to go inside and then on this next play here i got a little happy feet and hit the receiver before the ball reached us Making a stupid mistake right there as we get that pass interference called on us. And then on third and 16, thankfully, my teammates got to stop right there. But the offense couldn't do anything with it. So now we're in another crucial situation here with under a minute and 30 remaining and us still being down by three. And they just ran all over us as the time runs out here. 
We take a loss, ending the season five and seven. Oh my gosh. We had nine tackles for the game, tackle for loss. Just couldn't get it done as we end up being top two in the country with solo tackles with 54 of them and top 818 with the interception. But this is what the season slides were looking like as we come down to the final wire here. We had a pretty good season, could, definitely could have been better, but you could say that for the whole team as we finished five and seven, six in SC West and 12th in SCC as a whole. There's a lot of important decisions to be made. Will I be making a transfer or will I be staying for my final and senior year as the greatest white quarterback of all time? Yo, boy King Henley, stay tuned. Vote in the poll. I'm a casual.